everybody. Welcome on into One Nation. Andy Petrillo alongside Jordan Wilson. Trills and Wills with you. We're going to talk the Canadian national teams, in particular the men. we got a big year coming up. And in like the not so distant future, Jordo, we got Nations League again. Footy, footy, footy. <laughs> you excited about that? Footy. <laughs> Just a little bit? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm super excited. Come on now. I was singing last time, now you're singing. That's how you yeah. know we're in a good mood. By the Gotta way, the show right. Because we always sidetrack a little bit. Do you hum, sing, or dance when you're eating something you like? Um, I will say that if I go out to a restaurant with my lady and the food comes, uh, I do hit a couple of notes because I'm super excited. I was like, is food hot? Like, yeah, you should sing when you're in food a comes. restaurant. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty uh, cringe slash embarrassing slash. They always say my sister and my lady say I don't mm. know how to read the room. Basically, mm. I'm unhinged. Okay. Um, uh-huh. Which I don't know if that's true, but I feel. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, you start singing at a restaurant. I it's just hit time. Like, it's, it's but not a full song. Drinking box and food. Yeah. Uh, a little box juice. If you missed our box juice. soccer today, I'm so glad you've learned, Trill. Yeah, I, I remember that lunchtime, lunchtime, drinking box and lunchtime. I started singing that song after that show. By the way, if you miss it, you got to watch our one soccer today, where he decided to just start drinking. I was thirsty. Out of a juice box in the middle of the show. I do hum though. I'm like, mm, mm, mm. Your hummer when your yeah. food comes or just like in no, general. No, when I'm eating it. Okay. And it tastes good. I'm like, I'm so excited. So now if I'm eating great food and I'm watching a good soccer match. Mm, You're mm, humming? Mm, that's wow. me dancing in the crowd. And I am very excited. So March 25th, the men are in action and March 28th. So they're going to be taking on Curacao Honduras in Nations League. The 28th will be at home on home soil at uh, BMO Field. Both games can be seen right here on One Soccer. It's the first time we're going to be seeing the guys since the World Cup. Yeah. So we're pretty excited about this. Um, and, you know, we know that the, the key for the men, first of all, is you just want to keep on winning. You want to stay in League A. You want to stay tops in uh, Nations League. And then we know next year is the big one, right? So, f- so for this year, if they can get four out of the possible six points, they can mm. make their way to then uh, compete Correct. for the Nations League title, which is really exciting. But we know next year there's a lot on the line to be able to qualify for Copa America, because a team that's already going to the 2026 World Cup and doesn't have to go through the rigors of qualification like they did for 2022, they need all the tough competition they can get to prepare themselves for 2026. Trills, they need the tests. Yeah. They need that competition. They need to be tried and tested. They need to be uh, against those nations that have been there before and just see where they stack up so that when you go into a World Cup and no matter what your group looks like, that you're not shell-shocked. You're ready for it. So this is a beautiful thing. And there's no real rest, right? You, you just went off a World Cup. You have a couple months off. A lot of guys are back at their clubs. But then you're getting... Looking good Looking with good clubs. as well. We'll get yeah. into that. But you get a nice succession up until 2026 of quality games. So just winning now is, is so important for the, for the nation and the program. Nations League inaugural year 2019. So, I mean, basically Mexico and United States can, you know, they're still considered tops in CONCACAF and then Canada comes on during the qualifiers, which is why it was such a big deal, not just for Canada to qualify for the World Cup, which is massive. It was the fact that they did it tops of the table Mm -hmm. because USA, Mexico, these are nations who dominate. And listen, I would say continue. They haven't been completely dethroned by any means. So what would you, what, what do you think it would mean for Canada's stock confidence, reputation, uh, outside even of, of CONCACAF, if they can win CONCACAF Nations League? It's important. I think they, uh, they qualified and were top of the group and it was a resounding yes. Like Everyone's like, wow, this Canadian team can actually ball. But to do it again, that's always the thing, right? Or to be at the top again. Consistently. It shows that consistency. It shows there wasn't a fluke. I don't believe it's a fluke. I think any Canadian watching this team knows that this is the time. I think people that are just football lovers as well know that there's something special, something secret in the water, some secret sauce that the Canadians are playing <laughs> with. Um, but go and do it again. Go and do it again. I'm excited. I'm excited to watch the women in the summer. I'm excited to, to watch this succession these next three and a half years before the World Cup that we host or co-host. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful time to be a footy fan. It, it really is. And there are a lot of players to get excited about. You mentioned... After World Cup, I mean, Alistair Johnston, right, made the move to Celtic. Picks up his first goal. He's like, I don't care if they're going to call it an own goal. That was mine. (laughs) So he's feeling pretty good. But, you know, they were also tops his team. So he now knows what it's like to win 
overseas. Uh, Alfonso Davies is just doing Alfonso Davies things. Uh, Jonathan David is continuing to score. Also, you know, not that long ago, picking up a hat trick. Hat trick like, hero a couple of weeks ago. What you, like, what is he doing? Kyle Laren making the move in the Liga, and suddenly, you know, he's found a team that's really suiting him. We can go down the list of just what guys are continuing to do overseas. Is there one in particular you're just really excited to see back in the Canadian colors. Tay Jean oh. Buchanan. Because we gotta put this in perspective. A couple years ago. Perspectify me. Perspectify, I like the word. Um, I'm gonna start using it. Perspectify. <laughs> it does not use it. <laughs> <laughs> A couple years ago, Tay Jean wasn't even wearing red or white. That, that is crazy to think about. And then now for Club Bruges, he's a player that everyone's itching or talking about that he could easily move on to something bigger and better. Uh, the way he plays, the way that he just has like, almost like a chip on his shoulder. He's like, hey, I wanna show you how good I am and that I should have been here for a long time. I love it. I love that there are so many names as well that we can pick from this hat or this player pool that we could say, hey, I'm so excited to see this guy. I'm so excited to see different positions as well. Like it's not even like, hey, I know we have a mega superstar in Fonzie, but you can go down the line in midfield, even defenders would be like, hey, I want, really want to watch this guy, um, mm -hmm. how they're going to develop. So I'm so curious, like, who, who's your name? Oh, I, I like your Tejan shout out. It still blows my mind, to your point, a couple years ago, um, you know, really nobody really knew his name. And then even in the year where he made his senior debut, just a few months prior, he was trying to help Canada qualify for the Olympics at the under 23, gets a brace in the first game, yeah. his signature Look, backflip, right. which always scares me. So I'm like, oh <laughs> no, no. he clears it. I know. Some people but are like, ooh, but he clears it. He's like, when he lands, I'm like, all right, brother, you do this, you do this easily. It just, and I know it happens mostly in NFL football, like the celebrations, bah! and then, oh, there goes your ACL. So I always get so worried. I know, no, no, no. Anyways, it's a highly entertaining, Tejan, highly entertaining, love it. Now nah, keep doing the flips. You give me heart palpitations every time you do it. But that's the thing, right? That was under 23s. Yeah. And he really shone, earned the call up, and then has never really looked back. Has the speed, has the wherewithal, uh, just really, really smart. And then of course ends up making the move overseas as well. He's playing for the New England Revolution, then playing for Club Bruges, and off we go, Yeah. right? Like, I do like, uh, I do like Tejan. Who am I excited about? To me, I think maybe it'd be Stefan Eustachio. Mm. And I, we all love Atiba, but I think we also know that there's going to be a passing of the torch at, at some point, and in particular in that midfield. So maybe it's a bit of a duo for me of Eustachio and, and Kone. Yeah. Because I really want to see what the future of this midfield can do on a regular consistent basis. And I feel like those two in particular really make that up. What, when have you had on a national team a, two young midfielders, one being from Watford and one being from Porto? Like, I, when I look at the, the history of Canadian football, we've had some ballers that have played at top flight. Um, two in particular that coached me at York, which hmm. I, were idols growing up. But... Having players now that are playing at such a good clubs, at such a good level, you know that when they're coming into camp, they're bringing that. Yeah. And so that's something to be added on. Like the fact that we're talking about Kone at Watford and talking about Eustachio at Porto in the midfield for years to come. Yeah. Chef's kiss. It's yeah. beautiful. Eustachio's been balling for a while with Canadian soccer, you know, when he comes up and, and does his thing with the national team. Kone, again, relatively new. And young. And he had one year of pro soccer under his belt with nice. Montreal, CF Montreal, b before doing what he did with the national team. And you saw him, you know, at the World Cup, yeah. did not look at a place at all. But to your point, now he has this other experience. What is that going to do? How is that going to translate now to the national team? So I'm very excited. Yeah. I'm very excited to see that. And I guess maybe overarching, like, formations, to your point, I know John Herdman has stuck by Alfonso Davies. If he wants to be a forward, he's going to be a forward yeah. on this team. Is that conversation ever going to go away? I would say no. And it's not that – and it's not – for me personally, it's not that I don't trust Herdman's – uh, assessment of where he thinks Alfonso Davies wants to play. It's not that I don't even trust, you know, where Davies says he wants to play. It's just that then you go back to your club team and you do stupid things as a left back, which are so ridiculous that you're like, but look, 
Look, <laughs> so good right there. Look at him over there. Look at him over there. It's so they good. Back. But that's the thing. I guess he's um he's a little bit of a, a little bit of a Swiss Army knife in that you can put him in certain positions, maybe a little bit. You know, he'll take some time to get comfortable, but still looks good. But I don't think that conversation will ever go away. No, I don't think on so. On where he'll be properly I, utilized with the national team. I know my opinion, Trills. I've made it clear you that have. I, I think that a left back, left wing back, however you want to look at it, on the touchline, bombing forward, and you kind of just shift your formation a little bit to accommodate uh, him. I'm not saying every single time. I'm not saying you have to die with that formation. I just think that it should happen more. Mm -hmm. um, because also... The Tejan Buchanan's, the uh, Jonathan Davis, like the Kyle Lahrens, like even players coming up. Like I'm going to give Schaffelberg a shot. I feel like homeboy is ready. I feel like <laughs> Herdman, what do I know, right? You know all the good stuff, but throw homeboy in there. Like he could do a shift. Mm -hmm. There are players now, have Davies at his best position, but we, we've gotten into it last week on One Nation as well. Um, that's just my personal belief, but it is hard because a guy who is a megastar who can contribute offensively, you might want to just play him sometimes in a free role and let him roam. To your point about Schaffelberg, I don't think it was a smart move for Toronto FC to trade him away. <laughs> You said it straight through your teeth. It wasn't really smart. I don't, he was showing moments. I mean, he, there were times when it was a really bad year for Toronto FC and he'd be on the pitch and he'd be creating that spark. He'd be, you know, creating havoc for the other team. He would just be doing things. And then when he was gone, I was like, why? Where, is, where does Pac go? Where did, what, <laughs> where go? Where, what happened? <laughs> what, what happened? What? And then it's like, and there he is. Doing things with Nashville, looking good to the point where I feel he does deserve a chance with the national team. It, it should happen. It probably will happen. We're probably talking about John Herman says it's in the works. So we just got to wait and see. I know. I know. Anyways, I'm very excited. I mean, and that's the thing. This team, will, I don't feel, will lack for offensive power because you do have Davies, David, Kyle Lahren, uh, Ike Ugbo was somebody who was also brought in. Buchanan. Buchanan. I know. Yeah. I was no, making my way across sorry, the page. No, no. Did I was you just, see what I was doing? I was like, Buchanan, <laughs> save Tejan, say his name. <laughs> I was going I was like, from left to right. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Chos. I need to be patient. Sometimes that's how my brain works. I need to be patient. You're right. Sorry. <laughs> they don't lack for that offensive prowess. Yeah. Uh, more, 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 please. But I then I do want to see how that back line's also going to is what, round out, right? My question for you, Chos, is that is that your biggest concern looking at this Canadian team? Uh, I, I, yeah. 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 If I'm going to say, well, concern, what I'm going to keep an eye on, how do I want to see it shape out? Like, yeah, for sure. Because I even had this conversation with Alistair Johnson in that window in September when they, you know, Bratislava and Austria, when they were taking on Qatar and Uruguay, and especially going up against Uruguay, he said, like, listen, I get it. Everyone talks about the offense on this team. But, you know, but we as the defense need to rise to the the challenge. We need to rise to the occasion. And, again, if we look at how things went in Qatar, okay, listen, not the greatest. We can we can do glass half full, glass half empty game for sure. But part of my glass half full um, is they, they there were moments where defensively they held their own yeah. against very tough, in particular against Belgium. I don't care if you want to sit here and come at me with Belgium's older. That is Belgium yeah. with experienced players. And before things opened up in the second half against Croatia, they were very strong you know, defensively. So there are there are elements there where you're like, okay, but to me it's more of the center back pairing. There like I think your fullbacks, you, you've got it. You have Richie Larea, Alistair Johnson, Adekubi, but I'm just like, what's going to happen in there, you know, with Vittoria? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And um, so Kamal Miller for me, he's, uh, he's, a, he's great. yeah, no, he's a, he's a staple in terms of who's his partner or or if you're playing with three however it looks like he's a guy that's playing on that left side in the three it's just figuring out can we get two three more solid center backs and it's it's one of those things in in football where like it's a position um, oftentimes where you're like oh well, we have a right back that goes forward really well a left back center backs gotta be okay doing the dirty work and like maybe blocking a shot with your face or just playing crazy like Kamal Miller has that. You've seen with CF Montreal. He does that week in and week out. Waterman, solid player, but just needs maybe a bit more time to like grow into his own. But like someone needs to come and like beat their chest and take that spot and say, this is me. Like this is me for 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026. Like this is my position. Um, and they have that window. And I kept saying like, if you could create a player 
to play center back being whatever, 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, that's the thing, height sometimes. That's what Herdman wants. The, you, need, you need a big boy that's agile, who can, who's comfortable on the ball, who can play forward, but just has no nonsense defending. That's what is needed because all the names that we said, all the names we got excited for, they're going forward and yes, they'll trap back, but you still need players to just be no nonsense, get them the ball, mm -hmm. but also keep the ball from being in your net. Yeah, and, and I do remember Herdman said he wished he had a couple more Victorias height-wise too because especially when you're in the box and you're defending against corners, he wants that guy who can jump above everyone else. And we did see a couple times against stiffer competition how the offense can get over the heads yeah. sometimes too of, of your back line. Not that there's a problem <laughs> being little. You said you're 5'4", and that's, that's a great height for... Don't ever <laughs> try to take even half an So inch. for people that don't know, I tried to... I, I thought... Andy was like 5'2", and she literally almost cut off my head that day. So <laughs> now anyone asks me how tall, 5'4", she's 5'4". Yeah. I just don't want the smoke. I don't want you to fight me, anything. So also, before we move on, mm. so we talked about center back and the position. Kyle Hebert scored. Yeah. Winnipeg boy for St. Louis. Louis. A nice little pop header. Put enough on it, skipped off the grass, went mm. across the line. Um... Is there a center back pairing or center backs you're thinking of that could maybe pop in like right now? Like I know we shouted out Waterman. Mm -hmm. Heber, I feel like maybe should get a call up. Heber should probably get a call too. Why don't we ask somebody who's actually coached and who would never, ever make the mistake of saying I'm 5'2". Because he, he knows, knows better. better. He's known me a long time. Oh. He knows better than to do that. <laughs> oh. That's our boy Jimmy Brennan joining One Nation. Come on, Jimbo. <laughs> Hello, you beautiful people. Oh, stop it. You're the handsome man. I would have thought she was 5'5", five, five, at least taller than Javinko. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in with the heat, Look at this. Jimmy. Ah, I don't know if Jimmy can spill some tea on you. He could, absolutely. If you ask Jimmy, he said I came to work every day and I was just a pest. I loved getting at Staltieri. But I was just talking all the time and, and, and dancing. He would. The thing is, with Jordan, you know, if you... Put him in a circle room by himself, he would have a great conversation. <laughs> he could definitely chat a glass eye to sleep, that's for sure. He's but he was just he was such a character and he's he's a player and an individual that you love having in a dress room. You you love having being a part of the squad. And and as much as he he loved to have a laugh when it was game time, he was one of the first players out there rolling up his sleeves to to get stuck in. So he was a pleasure. <laughs> Oh my, I like, put him in a room and he could just have a it's great true. conversation. It's with true. Himself. It's true. It's true. It's true. But we love, we love that he is conversing with us here, Jimmy. Like, we, we're talking about the uh, Canadian men's national team. They're going to be in action shortly with CONCACAF Nations League. First time we're going to be seeing them come together uh, representing the Maple Leafs since World Cup. And there's been, there's been a lot going on since then, Jimmy. But one thing in particular has also been those rumors with John Herdman and possibly being the next head coach of New Zealand. And of course he came out with a statement said, I'm not going anywhere. Canada soccer came out with a statement saying, nah, it's all good. Like this is our guy. Uh, do you think that'll be addressed at all by the players on like day one of camp? Or do you think that it's no. something that's in the past? No, I think, I think that was all, it was all rubbish talk. And um, when you look at it for me, if John Herdman went to New Zealand, that's a step back. It's a huge step back for him. Where he is right now, I think he's in a good spot. He's just went to the World Cup with, with Canada. He's got the, the CONCACAF Gold Cup coming up. Possibility of getting to the Copa America plus the next World Cup at home. So why would he want to leave? Um, and I think everybody that was kind of in, in the soccer world realized that it was just, it was all fluff. Jimbo, a gaff. I'm going to refer to you as gaff because I don't really call you Jimbo like that. You're, you'll always be my... My guy and my coach, um, my question for you is, what's your expectation for this group? Like, after coming off of Qatar and qualifying and playing some bold, brave football, what's your expectation for the men's national team? They, they've got to continue that, uh, that momentum now. Um, they, gained, they gained some valuable experience during that World Cup. Uh, they've got a good core. Uh, I'm expecting some, a few younger players knocking on the door now. Um, and now everybody's fighting for the, for their opportunities. Uh, you know, center backs are going to be competing to, for starting positions. Goalkeepers, the exact same. When you look at Boren, he's, he's 35 now. Is he going to be still there for that next world cup? Well, St. Clair, uh, Pantamus, uh, Grippo, are they going to be fighting now for that position? Who wants it bad enough? And I heard you talking about it, Jordan. It, Players now, 
that are getting into this national team, that should be on their mind that they want to compete and they want a starting job because with these tournaments, with the Gold Cup coming up, Copa America, World Cup, I know if it's me, I know if it's you, you are going to be fighting tooth and nail to make sure that you cement that position and you're, you're first on that game sheet. So it should be very competitive, but I, they have to ride the momentum now. These games that are coming up against Honduras and Curacao, they're not going to be easy matches. These are tough matches because everything means something now. Everything's on the line. And they have to stay in that Group A if they want an opportunity and chance to go to Copa America. Well, exactly. And, and last summer, they dropped their game against Honduras 2-1 in Nations League. How tough is it, Jimmy, when you have a lot of players, and I had a chance to speak to Herdman after the World Cup, where he said Canada did make an impression, and he was getting a lot of phone calls from players who have dual citizenship, who were really interested now in representing Canada. And that's one thing you have to give Herdman credit for. He's brought a lot of players on over who could have represented other countries and chose Canada. But you still have these new faces, um, you know, again, whether they're dual citizens or just young players. We were talking about a Kyle Hebert here who's making some noise in Major League Soccer. Schaffelberg, again, making some noise. As a manager, how do you get them into the lineup but still want to field your top guys to win? Like, you want to get guys in. You want to get guys involved in the system. You want to see what you have. But at the same time, you can't completely experiment because you have to win. What, like, what are the challenges? Well, it's, you look, this, this, this game, um, and every time we play professional international football, it's all about winning. It's all about winning. And he's got to play his, his best 11 on that day. Whatever he's got available, he has to play them. Friendlies is an opportunity for you to see what players you have and, and bring players that don't have too much experience. But when it's, when it's, uh, when things are on the line, you have to play your top players. And it's good that he's having this problem now where there is a lot of players that are performing. I mean, you're talking about Schaffelberg. Schaffelberg has been on fire. He, he was brilliant the other night, scoring two goals. Yeah. Did TFC make a mistake? Maybe possibly, but you'll, you'll find out in the long run, but he's starting off. Uh, on the right foot and is working very well under Gary Smith. So you can, you hope that he continues that, that progress that he's on right now, because I do think he could have an opportunity and, and can play a big part with this national team, especially being a young age of 23. Um, but, you know, for John Herman, you've got to give him full credit um, in what he's done, recruiting players, scouting players all around the world. And yeah, players are knocking on the door now because everybody wants to be a part of success. And this national team pro program right now is getting success. And they're they're starting to open up the eyes around the world. And people, look, I'm getting phone calls as well, asking about this player and that player. Even when Coney went to, went to Watford, I had a friend of mine that was at Marseille asking about him. So, you know, these players are getting attention now. I know, eh? Look at me. Look at you. <laughs> Oh, hi. hi, I'm Jimmy. Just casually said that. Yeah, Kone. Yeah, it was a big deal. No, it's true. My, my, old team, my old teammates had a scouting. Matty Louisjean, he was my roommate at uh, Forest. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. And I told him, go get him. But he ended up going to Wofford. But it's this is what you want. And you want these players that have got dual citizenship as well. Because if you look at France, you look at Morocco, you look at these countries around the world. It's all these players with dual citizenships that, that's improving their program. And if we can get better players that are playing with our national team, it's only going to help with the younger generation as well that's coming through because you learn off of these players. The program gets it has more demand for success, which means the younger age groups has, has more demand for success. And everybody starts pushing each, each other. So it's good that we're getting this attention now. Um, and I hope John Herman has a massive headache with all these players that are that are knocking on his door because it's only going to bring more competition to to this squad and and make us make us better for it. Hey Gaff, center backs we were talking about earlier. Yeah, who do you think will play a big part in the next up and coming years, and who do you think right now should be playing or starting? That's a that's a good question. Do you take Johnson? Do you put Johnson at center back? Although he's playing fantastic for Celtic right now at, at, at right back, mm -hmm. Miller. Look, I, I like Miller because he's a he's a presence at the back. Um, he reads a game occasionally. Yes, he has a little hiccup during matches where he gives the ball away a little bit too easy, and if he if he can fix that, um, I think he'll he'll move on to that next level. It's just a couple of little mistakes that he, that he makes at, at that international level, and sometimes at club football, but. You know, he, he's got to learn from them. Um, and Waterman, Waterman, yeah, he's another good center back. But if I look at our center backs right now, like who's who's the center backs where you say they're a presence? 
And I think when you look at big teams around the world, you know, there's always that center back that's a big, big leader at the back that's constantly talking, that's physical, no nonsense defending. And we need somebody to take that. Uh, who it's going to be right now, I don't know. I, I definitely don't know. And, and you're looking at Victoria as well. Victoria is older now. and We need that that next young group coming through the system. And maybe we have to go out and find another center back that can that can play that role for us, that, that has dual citizenship. Before we let you go, Jimmy, uh, obviously Gold Cup, that's a, a big tournament and it's one that you know you've won it in 2000 with the Canadian national team. How important would it be for this team, with all the success and all the hype that it's built up, to actually now lift a trophy? Uh, I, I don't see why not. I don't see why they couldn't do it with the squad that they have. Um, I think John Herdman, one thing that he does is and everybody realizes this is he gives this squad so much confidence. They're, they're so well prepared. They know exactly what they have to do on that pitch. Um, and it's, it'll be a good opportunity for them to, to really show CONCACAF just how good they are. And I would love to see them to, to win another a gold cup. I mean, we've had opportunities where we've, we've won bronze, bronze medals after, after that, the gold that we, we won, but um, I think now's the time for this this national team to to get a trophy, and that should be on their mind right now. Is we need to win, and we need a trophy. Mm. Jimbo, you're a left foot assassin back in the day. Can you end the debate, or just maybe give some insight as a left footed player? Where should Alfonso Davies play if you were coaching? If I was coaching, I would keep him as a wing back. I'd keep him down that left side. Lefties, you know, he's he's comfortable there. We we tend to hug the line, and the line's kind of where we we know where where our shape is and our movement's going to go. And because we our whole life we've been down that that left side. Um, and I think with Afonzi, he's at his best when he's playing down the left as a, a left wing back, or he's playing left back or a left winger. But I, I like when he comes from distance because his pace and he reads the game well. And I think a lot of times when you watch him at Bayern, as a play's building up, the left side of player comes inside and he's, he's bombing around them. Um, and I think that's when, when he's at his best coming from deep. I, I mean, look, I understand John put, puts him up top. Yeah. You want to get his pace and try to get him behind, but you know, at the international level, level as well, good players can read that. We just drop off another five, six yards because, you know, he's, he's got too much pace. Let him have the ball at his feet and then we'll, we'll press him. But you, you can't let him get him from behind. But if, if I'm a right back and I know that left wing back has got bags of pace and I see him start bombing on and the left winger's got the ball and he starts dribbling inside, I've got to make a decision now. And I think that's where Fonzie's at his best and he causes most havoc is down that left side. I think earlier you gave him a new name, Alfonsi. Fonzie. <laughs> I don't know where that <laughs> We love you. We love you. And we love listening to you on Footy Prime. Where can people catch that? At footyprime.com. There you go. <laughs> we'll listen to him. Easy, easy peasy. Jimmy. Easy peasy. Get us on get us on Twitter. Get us on Insta. Uh, love it. Apple. All over the place. Find us, Footy Prime. I believe the term is wherever you get your podcast, you can find us. Jimmy. <laughs> you, you will find us. There you go. I appreciate you coming on One Nation, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Jimmy Brennan, former national team player, former your coach with York United, and just an overall great guy. Love him. Love, Love him. Don't tell him I said that because I always give him a I hard like, time. I feel like he's listening, though. No? Maybe. I don't know. Have we hung up on him yet? Uh, he's like, I got to keep him on his toes. Can't let him know I like him too much. He said you're 5'5". Yeah, because so, he, he knows. Oh, uh, okay. I've known Jimmy since he was playing with Toronto FC. Jimbo. So I remember First him ever signing. Player. We didn't even shout that out. Yeah, yeah. First, yeah. First signing. Uh, great, you know, representative, obviously, of the of a Canadian team entering sure. Major League Soccer. And, and he's somebody who truly understands, you know, coming back home, mm -hmm. right? When we've had this conversation around the CPL and what it means for a lot of players to be able to play in front of family and friends. He knew that. He knew exactly what that meant when he was able to come home and play with Toronto FC. And as a kid, he was someone I looked up to. I can ca probably count on one hand how many times he used his right foot, but his <laughs> left foot was sweet, man. Still is sweet. Um, oh. He's a left foot assassin for sure. Got to get him back out on the pitch. Or maybe he's like, oh, I pulled my hamstring. Sorry. The, the joke I tried is, to get D I tried to get Dwayne DiRizzard to take some shots on net one time when I was doing a feature. He's like, no, oh, the, the thing hamstring. is, after training, I used to hit balls with Jimmy, <laughs> like little pings, like 40 yards. Left foot was sweet. You could still hit them. But if I hit it two yards away from him. He's not running for it. He's not catching that. <laughs>
He's not. He's not. And like, bless his hamstrings. Like, I love you, Jimbo, but like, it had to be dead on. Oh, so good. All right, Canadian men back in action. Concacaf Nations League, March 25th, 28th, right here on One Soccer. You've been listening and watching One Nation.